Hidden in here is the Fractal Design S24, possibly one of the best CPU coolers I've reviewed, especially in terms of all-in-one liquid coolers, so let's take a look at it. I think it makes sense to start with what's in the box first. So you get the cooler itself, which is obviously a 240mm radiated uh, all-in-one liquid cooler. You also get two 120mm fans, which are actually pretty cool, and we'll come into those in a second, as well as a lot of mounting hardware. It comes with mounting hardware, for all of the Intel sockets and most of the AMD sockets excluding Threadripper although I do believe you can get an additional bracket to fit with that as well so it's pretty interesting. Now as a note on the AMD socket I'm actually really pleased with how Fractal Design have gone about you know kind of doing the AM4 socket for this one. Most of the companies have retrofitted their older coolers and even their newer ones like the Corsair H100i Pro with basically the two clip system which I really don't like, it doesn't feel very secure, it's actually a little bit of a pain to get on and off and generally just isn't as nice as having four screws that hold the uh, you know, CPU in and they've done that with this. You get a couple of screws that screw onto the existing back plate, but otherwise it's just a standard mounting plate. Now a quick tour of the cooler itself, the pump block is a kind of glossy black affair. There's no LEDs on this either, this is a very subtle design and I think a lot of people are going to like that, especially coming off of the high of RGB that we've had for the last couple of years. There is one sort of switch on the pump which is the entire outside of the pump can rotate to go from auto to PWM. Auto is essentially, or at least from what I've seen anyway, a more silent mode and essentially it just uses the temperature sensors that are inside the uh, loop itself to be able to monitor its temperature and ramp up and down the, the pump and the fans based on that. But if you set it to PWM, it will wholly you know, agree with what your motherboard says it should be running at. Now, another thing that you might notice on the pump is the barb fittings. This is a system that you can open up and expand if you like, it even says so in the manual and all you have to do is unscrew the fittings from the pump, obviously make sure that it's not you know, still in the system, it does have fluid in it and make sure that you have replacement fluid but you can add GPU blocks, you can add I don't know, extra CPU blocks if you fancy, if you're using a dual CPU system for whatever reason, you can add extra radiators or anything else you can add to this system which is actually a really nice thing and a pretty unique feature feature for an AIO. Now with this you do sacrifice a little bit of functionality in that for example the Corsair H100i Pro does have those A nice right angled fittings but also more importantly they can swivel and rotate so you have a little bit more positional kind of difference with that cooler versus this one these are just straight out and they're G1 quarter fittings so they are fairly large the tubing is also fairly large in comparison as well but if you're after a high end cooler and especially if you're after one like this which is going to fit in a sort of mid tower or larger case and I don't think you'll mind that much. Now they do have warranty void if removed stickers on the barbs from the radiator. This is a bit of a shame considering that the whole point of the system and the whole point of having removable barbs there is so you can expand the system and I understand why you know they would have that there but I still do feel like those sort of warranty void stickers are really just a detriment to the industry and something that I really dislike seeing on products especially ones that effectively they're inhibiting semi-core functionality. Now with that said, right next to those warranty void if removed stickers is a little PCB. This PCB is one of the defining features of why I love this cooler so much and it's basically just a little fan hub. It has a PWM wire that runs through one of the tubing wire or one of the tubes effectively or on the outside under the sleeving uh, and that connects to the pump itself and has everything just uh, all of the fans connected via the single PWM cable that comes from the pump that powers the pump and the fans and means that your wiring is incredibly neat and tight with this uh, kind of AIO versus you know something like the uh, Thermaltake uh, Flow 240 where you have two wires per fan, you have you know multiple wires per cooler, you have a fan hub, you have a USB cable, you have SATA power, all of that stuff is hidden and gone and it's just so beautiful. In terms of the actual radiator, it's a fairly standard thickness for this size of radiator and is a fairly standard density as well. It does have a bit larger of end tanks, especially 
mostly on the side with the fittings, but that's mostly because of the fan hub and the G1 quarter fittings, as opposed to, as I mentioned, with the Corsair radiator, the much smaller fitting and tubing. Now, I've made a lot of comparisons to the Corsair H100i Pro here, mostly because that is a brand new cooler that's just launched, and it's the basically the same product category, same sort of price performance that the S24 has and kind of product category it sits in. But what really impresses me with the S24 is not only how quiet the cooler is, uh, even in comparison to something like the H100i Pro, but also in terms of its performance, it is pretty incredible. Idle temperatures on a 2700X in the same conditions that the H100i Pro was in. In fact, actually, it's probably hotter ambient here now than it was then, so this is even more impressive, but uh, ambient was around about sort of 45 degrees Celsius, maybe 44, depending on which mode you have it in. Uh, and in terms of full Prime 95 load, 100% load on that 2700X, you're looking at, I think it was 77 degrees Celsius on the auto mode, which is a little bit more hesitant to turn the fan speed up. And then on the PWM mode, which is a lot less hesitant to turn the fan speed up, it was about 72 degrees Celsius, which is the same, if not slightly better than that H100i Pro. Of course, this cooler appeals to a slightly different market to, to the H100i, mostly because of its actually very nice and very minimalist aesthetic. The CPU block has a sort of you know fractal logo kind of cracking into it, and obviously it's kind of glossy plastic, so just bear that one in mind, but it is a much more subtle, much more kind of fade into the background cooler, even if you do have a window chassis. And I actually personally really like it. It feels like a, a good respite from the massive amounts of RGB that everything seems to have these days. And overall, I, I just, I really like the cooler. The, the only thing that I can find wrong with it or find kind of negative about it is those warranty void stickers. But otherwise, the, the barred fittings where you can upgrade the, the loop, the you know built-in cable management and fan hub, the just minimalistic and simple design and the overall just generally nice aesthetic are all just massive selling points for me. So we've come to the question that I ask in every review and that is would I put this in my rig? I'd actually have to say definitely, yes, 100%. I am I would love to have this in my rig. Uh, this is a fantastic cooler. The mounting system, especially for AMD, is brilliant, and I'm really happy with that one. Um, the overall, as I said, just overall design of the system, the features that it has, the performance, the noise, everything is just generally pretty excellent, and it's at a good price point for the you know this market of coolers. Of course, that is my thoughts, though. I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Are you interested in this cooler? And this review maybe has helped you out or hasn't or you know are you just are you not interested in the ios you'd much prefer uh, an air cooler or just you know sticking with your stock cooler on your whatever cpu you have let me know in the comments down below i'd love to hear from you and of course if you have any questions about the cooler leave them down there too if you want to buy the cooler or you want to check out pricing when and where you watch this take a look at the top link in the description down below i'll take you to your local amazon store where you can you know check that out if you want to support the channel you can hit that subscribe button with notifications for new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday with live streams on Thursday nights and you can check out the other links down there too like the merch link or the Patreon link if you want to support me directly or the Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links which also massively help me out. There is also things like my Twitter and Instagram that you can follow if you fancy. They're both at TechTeamGB. There's obviously the subscribe button there too and plenty of other videos over here for you to check out. Um, otherwise that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.